Alright, so we're back again with another build. This time it is a 2 inch quadcopter based off the Alpha RC Apex 2 inch frame. So I'll be going through the components, installing each of them into this frame here. Uh, I've already started just to see how everything fits and it's going well so far, but I'll be taking this apart and doing all the installs for each of the components and showing you how I put it together. So I'm Nampam, let's get into it. So a few of the components I'll go through, the main ones that I've chosen for this quadcopter is the flight controller here. This is the JHE MCU flight controller and the model is GHF405 AIO and it is a 405 uh, flight controller which allows for 4 UARTs and it does have a 40 amp ESC rating on it. So I'll be trying this out, I haven't used it before but it seems like it has some good specs on it so we'll give it a go, see how it performs on this little quad. The motors I've chosen for this is the RC in power, turn 03 motors, and it is 22,000 kVs. The kVs on this might be a bit high, but I might do a bit of motor throttle output limit on these just to see how they fly on a 2S. The VTX and the Express LRS receiver that I've chosen to use is this Happy Model Fusion VTX and RX all in one. So this has Express LRS built into it and also a 300 milliwatt VTX and it does have the ceramic antenna there for the Express LRS. You can use the external antenna, which is the one that they've supplied here inside the packet, and also a whip antenna for the VTX as well. So I'll be using that in this quad and see how it goes. I haven't seen many people use this one before, but it seems quite interesting that it does have this all-in-one PCB, uh, Express LRS and VTX. So I'll be installing that, showing you how I put that together. The camera that I've chosen is the Cadex Ant Nano and it is quite a small 14mm mounting camera that I've chosen to use and I think it's quite nice. I think Cadex FPV make decent quality cameras and I'll give this one a go on this quad. Alright, so those are the main components that I'll be putting into this quad. I've got some LED race wire here as well so I'll be going through the install of that. But for now, I'll be taking all of these parts off and I'll be doing the most essential part of the build, which is actually painting the sides of the frame. And I'll be doing that in the style of Sync FPV because if I can paint my frame the same way that he does, I'm pretty sure my flying abilities will be increased by about 20%. So let's go and give that a go right now. Okay, the frame is painted now, so if you wanted to increase your flying abilities by about 20% as well, you can do so by getting these oil-based Sharpies from your local craft store, and it's the same ones that Sync FPV does use. So just uh, put about two or three coats on this, letting it dry in between, and it should come up nice and clean like this. Okay, so the next thing that we'll be doing is putting on the flight controller and I will be using these 18mm M2 screws to get them on. Uh, I do have a kit of these M2 assorted assortment of different lengths and it goes from the 6mm all the way up to I think it's 25mm and it's just quite handy to have around. Uh, if I find that this one is a little bit too short or too long then I can just choose any one of the other ones. So get one of these, it's quite handy, it's good to use for any other builds that we have that require M2s. So I'll get on to putting this on. Okay, so the flight controller is on. One of the tips I have for this frame is that the screw holes for the 25mm mounting is actually drilled out so that it is between 25 to 26mm. So it does come a bit loose when you put it in and you might need to wiggle it around just to make sure that it does fit for the flight controller perfectly. Once that's in, I am hard mounting it with the nuts there on between the 
frame and the bottom plate, the bottom of the plate here. So I'll be screwing this quite tight uh, to hold it in so that it doesn't uh, get any of those um, loose vibrations going into the flight controller. The other thing to note is that there's the arrow here on the flight controller pointing forward to the front of the quadcopter, which is up here on this side. Okay, so the next thing I'll be putting on the frame is the LED race wires. I'm just going to be using double-sided tape to put them in place onto the arms like this and then we start soldering them on from the flight controller onto the this side of the LED race wires and I'll show you a trick that I do to just to get heat shrink on top of this just to protect it from uh, any of the crashes that might knock off the LEDs or damage this board. So I'll get onto that now. Okay, so you can see here now the LED race wires are on. I'm just going to now solder from the LED race wires each of these three pads here onto the motor points here on the flight controller. So looking at the quadcopter this way with the arrow pointing forward, motor 1, 2, 3 and 4, I'll be wiring these points onto the motor pads here. It doesn't matter which way they go, uh, we will change and can change the direction of the motors later in the software. So I'll just wire them up directly from here in each order. All right, the wires that I'll be using to get from the LED race wires onto the flight controller is the actual motor wires from the motor itself, but I'll need to cut it off. So from the motor to the actual LED race wire, it's going to need about that much there. So you might need about one or two centimeters from the motor to the actual pads on the LED race wire. So I'm just going to cut them off, giving me a little bit of extra just in case because the rest of the wire is quite long and we won't be needing to use all of it. So just in case, I'll give it quite a bit, maybe about two centimeters. Okay, so I've tinned up the pads on the flight controller for the motor and also the LED race wire. So I'm just going to attach these wires onto each one of them and then onto the flight controller. Okay, so I've soldered the wires onto the LED race wire. Now they're going straight onto the flight controller. Alright, so I've got the motor wires now, or the, at least the LED race wires now onto the flight controller and I've kind of just left a little bit of slack in there so I could slide the and tuck the wires underneath the flight controller there. So it's nice and neat, it's out of the way and it won't get caught on any twigs or branches if I do crash in the bushes. So the next part would be to get heat shrink on top of the LED race wire before we put on the motor because if we put the motor on we can't get the LED uh, get the uh, heat shrink on so I'll show how I do this now so I'll just uh, measure up the amount of heat shrink that I need so just enough to cover up the LED race wire and the solder points on top of it so I'll just eyeball it there and then cut it nice and clean All right so that's about as much as what I need and I'll need to stretch this out because the heat shrink won't go over the motor points here, the motor mounts here on the frame. So I use uh, pliers to stretch, stretch them out and then fit them over. Okay, so you can see that I can have stretched this out and it can go over the motor mount there and I can push it all the way back like this. So this gives me enough room 
to get the motor on mounted and then solder these points on and once I'm done with that I can slide this back over and then shrink it over the LED race wire. That protects it, saves it from getting any um, scratches and also knocking the LEDs off and damaging the PCB and that would render the motor non-functional. So this, uh, this way we can actually also see the paint come through which uh, I painstakingly did so I don't want to be wasting that visual effect. Alright, so I've got some masking tape there just to hold the heat shrink because it kept creeping up towards those pads there. I'm just going to tin them up now. And now I'll strip the wire so I can wire them onto the LED race wire. Alright, so we have the motor wires now soldered onto the LED race wire. I'll take this masking tape off and we can pull the heat shrink back over it and then start heating it to shrink it over the, the race wire there. So I'll do that now. All right, and there you have it. One of the motors is wired up with the LED race wire to the flight controller and I'll go ahead and do it for the rest of the motors. All right, so we have the motors on now with the LED race wires. The next thing I wanna do now is put on the power lead and also the battery plugs as well. I'm gonna be copying what I did in the previous video for the Mobigital with the two BT2 plugs that are wired up in series to the power terminals of the flight controller. Wiring it up like this will make it a 2S using two 1S batteries that I have here. These are the Tattoo 300 milliamp hours I like doing this with this quad here, it flies really well with these two batteries and I wanted to copy it and do the same thing over here. So I'm going to get into that now and show you the end result. There you go, I've got the battery leads on the flight controller now and also the two BT2 plugs on here wired up in series. So just to double check, we have the flat side of the BT2 connector here going to the red wire which is going to the positive terminal of the flight controller. The round side of the positive plug is then soldered onto the flat side of the second BT2 connector here and on the outside of this which is round the round side round is ground goes to the negative side of the flight controller so I've just double checked that here it looks good to me so I can proceed all right so now that we have the better leads soldered on I actually went ahead and put on the capacitor as well so you can see here I've gotten it to be sitting just right next to the PCB where the terminals for the positive and negative battery leads are and the negative side of the capacitor is directly soldered onto this terminal here for the flight controller on negative and the positive one on this side. So I wanted it to be here positioned like this because it's a whole lot easier um, to get it crammed into this tiny little space and I've measured it up and tested it out and the standoffs will sit just like this on either side of the capacitor and it kind of uh, holds it all together like that um, quite neatly. So it fits just and this is the, if you're wondering which capacitor it is, it is the, oops, where is the specs for it? It is a 25 volt 470 UF, I'm not sure if you can see that there but it's in there and it is the Rubicon brand. One thing I did know is that the Rubicon brand uh, spec for this capacitor. I have another one here of a different brand. This is a brand called SI and it is quite a bit longer. So it's about five mils longer but it has the same specs. So it is 25 volt 470 UF but the Rubicon brand version is smaller. The one that came with the flight controller is this one here and it is a big honker so you can see that this one is a 1000 uf 35 volt and it is much larger this is rated i think for when you're building a 6s uh, 5 inch quadcopter with this flight controller since it's 40 amp flight controller esc uh, i think uh, you could put it with a, a 6s possibly maybe a 4s or something but yeah this uh, capacitor is obviously too big for this quad so I've opted for something smaller since I'm running a 2s the 450 UF should be sufficient okay so that's gonna do it for this video 
as you can see I've got everything put together here uh, for the final build all together and it's ready to fly so the next video you'll see that I'll be installing the uh, fuge on board the camera and the antenna and also the propellers on so uh, stay tuned into the next video for this series and uh, you get to see the final build of this and we'll start to configure it and go for our first flight